Hello everyone and welcome to Study IQ English. I am Joy C. Joy. In this video, we will be discussing about the basal 1, 2 and 3 norms. We will see what are these different norms. Yesterday, we have discussed about the Wiffel defaulter and also about the capital adequacy ratio. So, from the capital adequacy ratio, we came to the new topic that is basal norms and yesterday, we started with basal norms already. So, we will be discussing <coughs> the basal norms the first, second and the third set of uh, basal norms in detail in this video. So, let's get started. So, in the last class, we have discussed about the basal norms, just revising it um, very briefly. So, basal, basal accords or basal norms. So, basal norms or basal accords, these are international banking regulations. These are international banking regulations and these are issued by BCBS. BCBS is banking, <coughs> sorry, Basel Committee on Banking Supervision. So, um, Basel Committee on Banking Supervision has made international regulations which are called as Basel Accord or Basel Norms. Now, uh, the purpose of these Basel Norms is to ensure that the financial institutions have enough capital on account to meet the obligations and to ab absorb the unexpected loss. So, the very objective of keeping uh, such international practices or international norms is to ensure that the financial institutions have enough cushion or enough capital to meet the uncertainties. It focuses on risk to banks and financial institutions. So, the focus is on risk. We have also seen the objectives. First one to strengthen the international banking system. Second is to promote convergence that is to bring a uniformity or a uniform standard in the regulation. Third one is to iron out competitive inequalities among the banks across the world. Now we are coming to three basal norms that is basal 1, 2 and 3. There are three sets of basal norms or basal accords. We will discuss them. Now the BCBS, that is the Basel Committee on Banking Supervision, that is the BCBS, Basel Committee on Banking Supervision. It is a primary global standard setter for prudential regulation of banks. The purpose of setting up Basel norms is to set up a universal or a global standard for the regulation of banks. Global standard for the regulation of the banks. And the BCBS, Basel Committee on Banking Supervision, it was established by the central bank governors of the group of 10 countries in 1974. And then the later this committee came up with the Basel norms. Now, basically what are these norms? We need to understand what are Basel norms. So, what are these norms all about? We know that banks are lenders. So, the primary activity of every bank is to lend money to the debtors and also to collect the depositor uh, money from the depositors collect deposits from the depositors so lending and accepting deposits we can say that lending uh, lending money and also accepting deposits these are the two primary functions of any bank or any financial institution now when the banks lend money to others there may be different classes of debtors that is banks lend money to different types of borrowers and these different types of borrowers also have different types of risk associated with them that is different borrowers have different set of risk maybe there are some borrowers who can easily repay them there are some borrowers who may not be able to repay it easily there are some loans that have a chances of turning into an npa turning into a non-performing asset so there is always a risk there is always an uncertainty because the class of <laughs> borrowers are different. Not all the borrowers are from the same class. Now, this risk factor exposes the bank or the financial institutions to a <laughs> risk of default. That is, the borrowers may not repay the loan. So, there is a risk of uh, default. Now, in order to counter this risk of default, what the banks have to do? Now, suppose um, in your life, in your personal life, suppose you come across a risk or you come across some kind of uncertainties. What do you do? In order to uh, 
face this uncertainty or the risk you may take an insurance the same way the banks also have to be prepared in order to face the risk so banks have to be very well prepared in order to face the risk and uh, for that the banks have to keep aside some amount of capital so banks have to set aside a part of their capital in order to face this risk or as a security against this risk uh, what is this risk risk of default or risk of non recovery risk of default or risk of non recovery <laughs> so basel norms basically provide such kind of guidelines or such kind of standards in order to prepare the bank to face these contingency situations or uncertain situations now how did this name basel came up the name basel this uh, name basel norms or the basel came up from the uh, name of the headquarters or the place where the headquarters of bis is located bis is bank for international settlements and bis the headquarters of the bank for international settlements is located in Switzerland it's a place called Basel in Switzerland Basel is a city in Switzerland and it is the headquarters of or uh, the headquarters of the BIS is in Basel so that's how this name also came up and this was formed in 1930 and under the BIS we have the BCBS that is a banking committee on bank uh, base sorry Basel committee on banking supervision now we'll come to three basel accords so basically this basel committee basel committee on banking supervision issued three sets of regulations that these three sets of regulations are known as basel 1 basel 2 and basel 3 norms respectively so we'll be discussing about these three norms in detail and also about three tiers of capital tier 1 capital tier 2 capital tier 3 capital <laughs> so let's get started with basel 1 the first basel accord that is the basel 1 now basel 1 the first basel accord it focused on capital adequacy of financial institutions the focus of basel 1 the first set of standards was capital adequacy of financial institutions so in order to ensure adequate capital in the financial institutions um it was introduced in 1988 the basel 1 norms were introduced in 1988 and as we said the focus was uh, all on capital adequacy which is credit risk so the focus was on credit risk or capital <coughs> adequacy now what is meant by a credit risk we have already seen that there are different classes or different sets of borrowers or there can be borrowers of different types whose repayment capacity would also be different now the credit risk arises from such kind of class or such differences in the class or the profile of the borrowers that is credit risk means the possibility of a loss resulting from borrower's failure to repay so if the borrower if the borrower fails to repay if the borrower fails to repay the money there can be a loss for the bank so such kind of a loss or uncertainty is called a credit risk so basically it refers to the risk that the lender may not receive the owed principal and interest the lender here refers to the banks or financial institutions so in certain cases the banks or financial institutions may not receive the principal amount or the interest such kind of risk <coughs> these were the major focus area of the first uh, basel accord that is the capital adequacy or credit risk was the major uh, focus area so capital adequacy risk categorizes the assets of financial institutions into five categories that is the assets of a financial institution refers to the loans disbursed by the financial institutions or the credit given by the financial institutions so basically we can divide the loan or the assets of the financial institutions into five categories which are these categories 0% 10% 20% 50% and 100% these are the different categories that is the assets or the loans given by the financial institutions can be of five categories 0% means 0% risk 10% means less risk 10% risk risk again 20% risk 50% risk or even 100% risk 100% risk means there is no chance of repayment or there is a total loss for the bank 
banks that operate inter internationally are required to have a risk weight of 8 percentage or less. So that is the first standard set up by the Basel norm. That is the capital adequacy ratio. Those banks that are operating at the international level, they have to keep a 8 percentage of capital adequacy ratio. So 8 percentage of their capital should be kept as CAR in order to meet this contingencies. That is the minimum capital requirement. It was 8 percentage of the risk weighted assets. 8 percentage of risk weighted assets. Now what is a risk weighted asset? It means assets with different risk profile. That is loans with different risk profile. That is <laughs> risk weighted assets. Now India adopted the Basel 1 guidelines only in 1999 after the Narasimhu committee recommendation. But the uh, Basel 1 accord or the Basel 1 standards were released in 1988 itself. Only after 11 years in 1999 we adopted the Basel 1 standards. So this is about Basel 1 standards. Next we will move on to Basel 2. So next is Basel 2, the second Basel accord. Uh, these standards were uh, announced or published in 2004 but these were fully implemented by 2015. So in 2004 the Basel 2 guidelines or the Basel 2 standards were announced which were implemented only in 2015, implemented fully only in 2015. Now, what was Basel 2 norms? We already had a Basel norm uh, 1. Basel 1. So, what was Basel 2? It was actually a refined and reformed version of Basel 1. A refined and a reformed version of Basel 1 accord. And this Basel 2, it was based on three major areas. Or there were three major focus areas. In case of Basel 1, we have seen that there was only one focus area which was capital adequacy. Whereas in case of Basel 2, there were three major uh, areas. One is minimum capital requirement. Second one is supervisory review. And third one is market discipline. So there were three major um, areas. First coming to minimum capital requirement. So what is this minimum capital requirement? So here the minimum capital requirement it refers to uh, the capital adequacy ratio. That is the banks should maintain a minimum adequacy ratio of 8 percentage of risk assets. So a minimum capital requirement of 8 percentage of the risk assets must be kept. So CAR or capital adequacy ratio should be at least 8 percentage. That is the first one. Second one is supervisory review. Supervisory review. What is meant by supervisory review? It means the supervision over the uh, banks. So under the supervisory review, banks were needed to develop and uh, develop and use better risk management techniques in monetary as well as managing uh, the risk that is credit risk banks basically face three kinds of risk one is credit risk another one is market risk third one is operational risk so credit risk market risk and operational risk these are the three kinds of risk faced by the Banks. So, banks should adhere to better practices, better supervisory and management practices to counter these three types of risk. <laughs> Credit risk, market risk and operational risk. Third one, third major focus area was the market discipline. So, mar market discipline here refers to disclosure requirements. The need for disclosure requirements were increased under the Basel 2 norms. That is, banks should mandatorily disclose many of their information including the CAR, risk exposure, etc. to whom? To the central bank. So, why this will improve the transparency in the working of the banks? So, third one was regarding market discipline which meant that the bank should adhere to better disclosure of their information especially regarding the capital adequacy ratio especially regarding the risk that the banks face etc so that there would be more transparency and the central bank sh should be able to take better supervision over the banks these were the three major pillars of the basel 3 norms and the 
focus of this accord was to strengthen international banking requirements as well as to supervise and enforce these requirements. That was the very purpose of Basel II norms. So that is Basel II norms. Next is Basel III norms. That is the third Basel accord. So this was adopted in 2010. The guidelines were released in 2010. Basel III Accord Guidelines released in 2010 and it's a comprehensive set of reform measures aimed to strengthen regulation, supervision and risk management of the banking sector. So regulation, regulating the banks, supervising the banks and also a better risk management of the banking sector. Now, if you look at the time period in which the Basel III norms were released it was in 2010 so what would be the probable reason uh, for releasing a better standard or a more improved and refined standard called the basel 3 norms the reason was that the country or the entire uh, world different countries or the entire world was facing or going through a severe economic crisis called the global financial crisis in 2008 so the whole world in 2008 confronted the global financial crisis. So the global financial crisis necessitated the need for a better standard or better practice. So that is how the Basel III norms came into uh, force. That is the Basel III norms. It's a comprehensive set of reform measures which are aimed to strengthen regulation, supervision and risk management of the banking sector. Now let's come to the aim and objective objectives of the Basel III norms. First is improve the banking sector's ability to absorb shocks. What do you mean by shocks? Shocks are uncertainties. Now, let, let us take an example. Suppose uh, you came to know a very se serious thing all on a sudden. It's a shock. Otherwise, let us take an example. Suppose you have given an exam and the exam is very easy for you. You are expecting a positive result. But unfortunately, when the results were out, you did not clear through the exam. So it is a shock because you expected something else. You are expecting something positive. So uh, it is a shock always when you have something unexpected in the plate. So um, to absorb the shocks, shocks here refers to uncertainties of the banking system arising from financial and economic stress. Now, why uh, a stress has been given to shocks? Because 2008 global financial crisis was a shock for the entire world. Why? Because it was largely unexpected. <laughs> so it can arise from financial and economic stress or whatever other sources. Second is to improve the risk management and governance of the banks. To better manage the risk in the banking system and also improve the governance structure in the banks. Third is to strengthen banks transparency and disclosures. Banks should become more transparent in their disclosures, in their overall disclosures. So these were the aims of third uh, Basel, uh, third Basel Accord, and it focused on four parameters. There were four parameters. One is capital. Second one is leverage. Third one is funding. Fourth one is liquidity. Okay. <coughs> so these are the four parameters. So capital, funding, leverage and liquidity. So these were the four parameters based on which the Basel 3 standards were set up. So this is about the Basel 1, 2 and 3. Now we will move on to the three tiers of capital. Which are the three tiers of capital that a bank has. Now, the capital of a bank has been classified into three tiers. The first one is tier 1 capital, T1 capital. It is also called as T1 capital. That is, it is a term used to describe the capital adequacy of a bank. That is, it can absorb losses without the bank being required to cease trading. Tier 1 capital, tier 1 capital refers to the capital adequacy of a bank. That is, how much capital does a bank has? in order to absorb the losses without affecting their normal business. That is tier 1 capital. Now, tier 2 capital, uh, loss or a bank run. Okay. Tier 2 capital is a term used to describe the capital adequacy of a bank. It can absorb losses in the event of a winding up and so provides a lesser degree of protection to the depositors. So, tier 2 capital is the capital required to absorb losses of a bank in case of a winding up of a bank, uh, in case if the bank is winding up. 
Third one is tier 3 capital. It is used to describe capital adequacy of a bank. Consider the tertiary capital of the banks which are used to meet or support the market risk, commodities risk and foreign currency risk. So tertiary capital. That is tier 3 capital is also known as tier 3 capital is also known as tertiary capital. Now what is this tertiary capital? So tertiary capital is a term which is used to um, measure the capital that the banks banks used to meet or support the market risk, commodities risk and foreign currency risk. That is tier 3 capital. So these are the three tiers of capital that a bank uh, has. Now we also need to understand one more term that is bank run. Bank run. So what is the situation called a bank run? Uh, bank run is a situation uh, which usually happens or occurs with a bank when a large number of customers of a bank or a financial institution withdraw their deposits simultaneously uh, why because of a concern of bank insolvency so uh, the customers think that the banks can get insolvent very soon or there are signals of banks banks insolvency and due to the fear of insolvency of the banks a large number of depositors try to withdraw their money simultaneously so the bank can be short of liquidity and this can lead to a situation called bank run so i just explained this term along with it that's it for now we'll be continuing with the series in the next video thank you so much for watching i wish you all the very best thank you